Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm Laura, and thank you so much for being here. I really, I've really had such a nice time in this event so far, so thanks to Stan for that. And I want to say a special thank you to the students who are working this festival. You guys are so friendly and welcoming. I really, it's yeah. such a great yeah. Script and it's called Because the Boat Might Break. So if you hear a lot of water in these poems, you are not mistaken. There's a lot of water. Um, this first poem that I like to read came out of an experience I had when a friend of mine was teaching English as a foreign language classes, and she asked me to come and volunteer with her students to do conversational practice, which was great because you know you just talk to people and that's always fun. And uh, she said, you know, talk to them about anything you want. And because I was thinking about water and writing about water a lot, I decided to ask about water and experiences and memories with water and memories about swimming. Um, so this poem came out of one of the conversations I had. And it's called Sister Agnes Tells About the Crocodile. When I went to church, my family learned it wasn't me, although I'd been swimming that day too. In Tanzania, we learn to swim because the boat might break. Not for fun, not like here. Do you know? A crocodile will slice the water with its tail, create such splashing that the swimmer knows not which way is away and which is in the mouth. They do not like fresh meat, so they float the bodies underneath for a day or two, and that's how we knew. Some men fishing saw the crocodile dragging her beneath up the river to his home. So next I have a Ben Franklin poem, Delaware River. Ricochet eye flash off the iron Delaware, metallic sea salt crackles in a boatman's scruff. Two blocks over, Ben Franklin forever ties a key to a kite and smiles into a fragmenting sky. Audacity yields a fish on the plate and a bucket of friends. The Friday night junto, pure questions and ale. Quill in hand, he whips up a reason, mostly the body's raw need wrapped in four-syllable words. Somehow he convinces them he's beyond black caverns of need. Meanwhile, the Delaware belches out fish, froth, transit, ideas. The boatman dampens the distant horizon with his eyes, mouth clamped against the smell. The fish are not all he was meant to be, but his throat only bubbles with required words. He too saw the electric in skies, in eels, in flesh after months of waiting. He too thought beyond the empty stomach, the barren bed. So now I'm going to read a poem about an octopus, a mother octopus. Um, so I, maybe everyone knows this except for me, but I recently learned that a mother octopus dies four or five months after um, she gives birth. And the other footnote that you need to know for this poem is that, and again, everybody may already know this, um, hectocotylus is octopus penis. <laughs> mother octopus in end days. Once my muscled arms, don't dare call them tentacles, clambered over golden seabed and through velvety blue-green water, sparkled in plankton, your stars pale mimicry. Now upended, my arms flail in sea breeze, motion of used car lot inflatable tube man, half determined, half random, or the early determination sucked into others' movement Others' meaning, others' hunger cries, a vortex of unending need. Don't get me started on offspring. You know they kill you, right? But it's a fast track to illusions of purpose, making everything right again in the great false cosmic do-over. God damn the hecticotalus. <laughs> Neuron rich, a collagen tapestry, I pretended other lives once until I could only stir the brine. Did I leave something here? And was it enough? What's next for me? Feeling for one last pleasure, my three hearts burnt through. 
This one's called pomegranate. Witches' tools and wooden bends, stiffly forgiving, each fingerprint dent a whisper. Change. What is it, Mommy? Put that back. We don't need it. Who am I to digest the indigestible? The negative of a baseball glove, weighty and mad. Red leather, once burnished, abandoned to rain. Penance requires research. Joy of cooking. In the water, light rind and pith will float and the heavy seeds sink. Scored and tattered, an interior skin, organ casing honeycombed to rubies, red delight, scarlet disgust, spiraling inward, familiar as bone. So um, it seems like the general consensus is that 2016 was not a great year for a lot of people. <laughs> Um, for big reasons and small reasons. Um, so I've been working on this poem for a while and it's called How to Take Bad News. One, practice early and with the mild kind. If you're beyond all that, recall, your first lover is leaving you for someone you both mocked in private. She's really great once you get to know her. We were wrong. <laughs> Two, embrace small shocks, run and fall down on pavement in adulthood, wear the skin off your hip bones in twin ovals, don't even show your knees if they are the same color as the rest of you, only supplicants need apply for further construction. Three, work your tolerance up slowly, begin to imagine disasters, trash can fires that lick the curtains, laptop in the bathtub, your daughter's cat dead on the ottoman when you return from work. Be glad any day when none of it happens. Four, expect long-term illness and ailments, both pedestrian and bizarre, both your own and others, deeply affecting and forgotten immediately. Borrow language from doctors, watchful waiting, active surveillance. Five, build a team, a support system, Hairdresser, therapist, gynecologist, bartender, between one and three close friends. Any more than that and you're showing off. Six, whatever you do, don't sit down. They will ask about your verticality when the phone call comes, but keep moving. It's best to be a target already in motion. The driver who blows through the highway deer survives. Blood on the windshield, furry chunk in the grill. Seven, when your best addiction stop RSVPing for parties and start rolling you in blankets midday, remember the lesson of the first lover. We were wrong about her. Absorb the lesson of infants. It's possible to clench a fist for hours at a time. Eight, get your hands on talismans. Life insurance writers, gym memberships, special protections, flood damage, online savings accounts, pet antidepressants, human supplements of all kinds. Double down for the baby. He's got more shit to come than the rest of you. Hold your documents, your childproof bottles, your laminated cards. Hold them in your fists and wave them around your home, breathing out gusts of the sage lamb burger you ate for lunch. Nine. Let your vilest moments burn until pure. 10. The bad news will keep coming, but so will you. Sometimes the wave will break on you and roll you into shards of shells, leaving you coughing up salt, cursing, examining the scratches on your chest for days. Other times you'll see the terror first and dive neatly under the vortex, surfacing nose first, double fistfuls of silt. So, okay, next is the obligatory offbeat love poem, non-harmonic love song. I wanted to wrap you around me like a chainmail shawl, board a red eye and stay up all night whispering through the chinks, not realizing you were more liquid than metal. I used to think I had to fight my way into each new love, scarify into memory my I am not herness. 
New Romance was an angry, smelly potion drawing out the crap before anything could heal over. I sat on street corners, blanket full of photo negatives, daring anyone to ask about the two-legged stool, the dollhouse full of snow. Eye contact was for suckers. When I looked down from the white-hot sky, you were already all around me, a body temperature tide pool, rippled surface ready for splashing or running or sitting down laughing with open mouth and teeth and damp hat brim. I was in before I could think up a reason out. Is this the real way then? No collision, no wave, no metallic banner taped in the hallway. Tire tracks, a rain full of ocean, a shell that crackles underfoot but doesn't stab. Your blank-faced arrival, a moon tugging at the water. Stretch marks. Stretch marks. Sometimes when I free my own belly to the water, I look down into the school of razor fish crisscrossing my flesh. Summer sky of lightning, child's first attempt at jagged alphabet, a whole flock of sleeping skin babies I can cart around forever. No sling needed. They glitter like flecks of mica in the gully. So brightly frosted, I can taste the cool chlorine softness of their grooves in the back of my mouth. Each a memory of drum tautness, berry burstingness, the thrum, 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 and log roll that was just inside. Above my hips, balustraria, arrow slits to colonies of liquid blue veins. 